So one of the first things I check when I'm outside a property is the roof. I have a good look just to see if I can see any dips, any cracked tiles, and just to check the general condition. And then also the chimney as well. So you can see on this property that the chimney pots have actually been removed. So what I would be checking there is actually that they are still vented and it hasn't been capped off completely because then that would cause a damp issue inside the property. You can also see from the outside as well, um, just checking the pointing. If we move over to the road to go a little bit closer to the property, um, it's always a good idea just to check um, so the cement between the bricks here which is the point in just to see the general sort of condition of the property you'll notice that there's an air brick outside here so that would suggest that it leads to a suspend underneath a suspended floor or into the cellar in this property it's actually down into a cellar so what I would be doing is just checking that that air brick is actually open and working and then there's another one just here as well which suggests that there is some good air and ventilation going down into that cellar as we then come into the property I will be checking for any damp issues at all. So I would be going just around all of the walls. Um, I would, my, the general way that I actually do this is to go around a wall, up a corner to the top, and then come back down. And then I come around a wall again, just getting right into these corners, just checking for any damp issues at all. And you'll notice in this property, it has actually just been renovated. So we're not gonna find any today, but this is just the method that I use to go all the way around. And then once I've been around all of the walls, I can then just come around and just double check around all of the ceiling, um, around the ceiling where the ceiling joins the walls as well, just to check for any damp issues, any cracks, any problems where there might have been leaks previously. Obviously it's important just to check the doors and a good idea is to double check that the doors close nice and smoothly um, and close okay, just to see if you're gonna to have to have either them maintained or replaced. And then of course the windows as well. And I always check the windows in all of the properties that I come into just to view, because the majority of the properties that I do view, believe it or not, the windows don't actually open. There's always a problem of some sort, and that could come down to either needing to replace a window. Alternatively, um, you could just have it serviced. And then obviously checking the radiators, the condition of them, um, which gives me an idea of the heating system. So I now know, well, I've got a good idea that there's gonna be a, a boiler in the property. And then I check old chimney breasts. So in this property here, you can see that there is an old chimney breast and the chances, um, or there's a high chance that there would actually be some uh, damp issues, uh, which is caused by hygroscopic salts on chimney breasts. So it's a good idea to have a really good check around these chimney breasts. Now you can see that this one is venting. So what I would do is just double check that that vent's working and I can feel the fresh air actually coming out of that one, which is a really good sign. I would then move through into the next room, double checking the door on the way through. Yes, I can see that this one closes nice and soundly, which is always good. And then just flicking on the lights as I leave, and I can see that that actually works as well. Coming into the kitchen area just here, the things that I'd be checking is inside the oven. Is the oven going to be okay? Will it need replacing? Does it work? I would turn the oven on and I would turn the hobs on as well. I'd also flick on the extractor fan just to make sure that that's working and then have a really good look at the boiler. Now you can obviously see that this boiler here is brand spanking new so there's going to be no issues at all but I would just take a make and model. I would check out the boiler, I would turn it on and make sure that it is functional and it is working and I would just check the age just to see how long I've got. Boilers typically last about 10 years or so. I would of course check the windows in all of the rooms when I go in them, just making sure that they do all open and close nice and smoothly, nice and easily. Um, and then inside the kitchen cupboards, just to see the general condition. Obviously this place has been renovated, so it's nice and clean. So there isn't a great deal of follow-up or checking that I would really need to do. However, if I was noticing grubby, if I was noticing doors hanging off, etc., then it would prompt me to start looking that little bit further. I would then turn the tap on and make sure that I can get some hot water coming through, obviously after I've turned the boiler on if it isn't on already, and then check the drawers um, and all of the units in here in the kitchen. Again, we've got a fireplace, so I would be checking all the way around for damp issues in all rooms as I go into them and especially on any fireplaces. Again, we've got a vent, so I would just be checking that the air is coming through, and it is actually on that one there. I'd be checking the radiators out, of course, checking the ceiling just to make sure that there's no drips coming through, no water stains, etc. Um, and then, of course, the lights in each of the rooms as well. Doors check as we go through. Lights go on and off as we go through. Doors get checked as we go past them just to ensure. And of course, as we're going around, we're checking all walls, all windows, all ceilings um, around just for any damp issues or, or noticeable spots. It's really easy for somebody to conceal or hide issues and problems in properties. So it's your job really to go in and find them and actually look for a property not to work rather than for a property to work. And then of course, at the end of your inspection, if the property does work, then it's an absolute bonus. 
So the things that would be highlighted to me here in this bathroom and the reason why I'd like it, there's already a great mirror on the wall and it's secured on the wall. So I know there's not gonna be any issues from tenants putting up their own mirrors or things falling off. We've got a towel hook here as well, which is on the wall. It's not on the door, which is great, which means that they are not gonna have issues of any towel hooks falling out of the door or putting holes in the door at all. You see, we've got a decent basin, decent toilet. We've got a toilet roll holder, which again is good that there's one in there, otherwise the tenants would be putting one up. And you can see that there's a curtain pole in here um, and a, a shower curtain. This is actually attractive to me for the simple fact that these are so quick, easy, um, and cheap to change over rather than a screen. You'll find that when you've got screens in properties, they get grubby, they're very easily broken, and they can come off. So they do cause issues, and they're expensive to replace as well. Mix a shower in here over a bath, which I know with a bath and a shower combination will attract the most tenant pools. Good, decent double glazed window with a blind on it as well, which is good. Tenants always want a bit of privacy in bathrooms. And you can see here that there's a constant trickle fan within this bathroom. So this fan is on all of the time, sucking the moisture out of the bathroom. And if you've got a different, fan, a different type of fan in here, I would strongly advise that you get a really good, solid, decent trickle fan. These things uh, cost about £1.12 to run for the year. It will be boosted with this light. So as I turn the light on in the bathroom, you can see that it gives it a bit of an extra boost to suck out the moisture when somebody's in the bath or having a shower, etc. However, when it is turned off, it is slowly, constantly trickling in the background just to extract all of that moisture from one of the wettest rooms in the property. When we go back just through to the kitchen, you'll notice that there's also one of these fans here above the window in the kitchen, which is serving exactly the same purpose. If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over for two million pounds. Simply go to the description below, click on the link and I'll send you out a free copy. We then come to the stair rail, nice new carpet up the stair rail and we've got a stair rail here on the stairs um, which is obviously important. If you don't have one of these what you find is you get grubby marks all the way up the walls where the tenants have rubbed their hands up the walls so that's always a great good sign. And then into the bedrooms again just a quick check so as we go in we'll turn a light on to ensure that the electrics are all fine. Quick look at the sockets as we go around as well and then doing the damp checks all the way around the lines of the walls. So we go all the way around the floor all the way up to the ceiling, around the floor, just checking the radiator as we go past, all the way up to the ceiling, back down, and then we come to an old chimney breast, so we do really check out this one. Now you'll notice that there's no vent in this chimney here, but I'm not seeing any issues, any problems at all. So what I might just do in this property is just put a hole in here and put a vent on it just to help the air flow through. Then we follow the wall all the way around. Uh, we get to our door, we can double check the door as we're coming in that it opens and closes properly. And then we'll do our damp checks to make sure nothing's coming through the ceiling. Um, everything looks all right. There's no damp issues, no condensation problems, etc. And then have a quick look at the window. Windows brand spanking new in this property, so it's not an issue, but I would always just double check that they open and close all right. Into the second bedroom, you can see that it's pretty much the same, so I'm not gonna go around it again, but you know what we check in here. This fireplace actually has got a vent in it, so I would just, of course, check that for the air, checking the window, checking the radiator, checking for damp, etc., and really looking for any issues that can help me negotiate this price down. Then outside the back of the property, I would just be checking the walls again for the point, and you can see that this rear extension here um, is a lot more modern actually than the property, so that looks a lot more newer um, than the main house. The main house here, I'll be checking the point, and you can see that there is some pointing issues just up there. There's a good example actually for you where you can see just some cracks in the wall just here. So that would just need repointing up. Um, and then you can see the way we've got that vent, we've got the flue for the boiler as well. And then I just take a step back and just see if I can actually see the roof here, just to ensure that it is in good condition. There's no dips in it, no missing or cracked tiles. Obviously it's quite difficult to see it from here, but you can just have a cut of cast over and you can see from this roof that it looks really, really sound. It doesn't look like there's any issues or problems up there at all.
So when you are actually viewing these buy-to-let investment properties, like I mentioned before, you want to be going out there and looking for the issues, looking for the problems and seeing if anybody, if the vendor out there has actually tried to conceal anything. You're actually looking for these properties not to work rather than trying to force them and make them work. And then of course, after you're viewing, if it does work, with even with you trying to make it not work, then you've got yourself a cracking property. Obviously, we didn't find any issues in this property. This is the type of property you want to be bringing into your portfolio. It's ready to go. It's absolutely perfect and there's no issues or problems at all with it. However, hopefully this video has just given you an idea of things to look out for when you're out there viewing yourself. If you have got any value from this video at all, please do give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, if you wanted to pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, make sure you go to the description and click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.